Welcome to another Noble Review Session for Students of Economics. I'm Mr. Medico, and today we are going to discuss elasticity in labor and financial capital markets. You should know by now that the term elasticity is just a fancy term to describe responsiveness or sensitivity in economics. In this lesson, we are first going to look at responsiveness in the labor market. The wage elasticity of labor supply can be calculated using percent changes, just like in the price elasticity of demand and supply formulas. Except here, we are calculating how responsive laborers are to changes in wages or salaries. The formula is the percent change in the quantity supplied of labor divided by the percent change in wage. Generally, low-skilled jobs such as cashiers have a more elastic wage elasticity of supply than something like brain surgeons. Obviously, it takes more education, training, money, and time to be a brain surgeon than a cashier at a local food store. In the short run, you will not see a large percentage change of brain surgeons when the market salary of brain surgeons change. The supply curve for brain surgeons in the labor market will be relatively steeper than the supply curve for cashiers in the labor market. We can also think about labor market supply for people in their 20s versus labor market supply for people in their 50s. The wage elasticity of labor supply is more likely more elastic for the 22-year-old than the 52-year-old. It is easier for 22-year-olds to respond to an increase in wages than people who are in their final 10 to 15 years in the labor force. A 22-year-old can afford to be more flexible in hours worked or type of profession he or she wishes to pursue. Next, let's look at the elasticity of savings to link up responsiveness to financial capital markets. In economics, more savings is good for an economy because it will lead to more investment in capital goods and economic growth over the long run. More savings is also good for an individual looking to grow their household wealth. The interest rate elasticity of savings measures how responsive savers are to a change in interest rates. The formula is the percent change in the quantity of savings divided by the percent change in the interest rate. A good question to think about from a policy perspective is whether tax breaks that increase the return to savings will lead to a large increase in savings or a small increase in savings. Not all economists agree on how responsive savers are to a change in interest rates, and that's what usually happens when you talk about macroeconomic issues and possible economic policies. But the general consensus seems to be that in the short run, the elasticity of savings is relatively inelastic. The supply curve of savings would therefore be relatively steep. Well, that wraps up this Noble Economics lesson. To download Noble Review Books, lessons, and podcasts, head over to NobleEconomics.com. Thanks for watching. Until next time.